This is Guardian Radio, your station for up-to-the-minute news, intelligent, interactive, and engaging conversation. 96.9 FM. The views and opinions of the hosts and guests are their own and do not necessarily reflect the position of the management and staff of Guardian Networks. In, in addition to that. Good morning and welcome to Guardian Radio AM. Today is Wednesday, Wednesday, March 8th, and it's International Women's Day. And in order to celebrate, recognize International Women's Day, we have two special guests. We have Miss Cleopatra Christie and, of course, Miss Shantez Dillett Wilson. I pronounced that first name right? Yes. Oh, I'm good. Good job. I'm good. I'm good. And we're having a discussion, right? Um, we were, earlier we were talking with Aaron about various topics, but I want to talk about women being in crisis and the response to that crisis, right? Um, I think we're in a housing crisis in the Bahamas. I believe this is an urgent matter, and whereas women creates home and family life, and knowing that there is a housing crisis, that means the entire family in the Bahamas is in crisis. And that's my, my humble opinion. And I'd like to know what is the crisis center and the NGOs, NPOs doing in order to promote, highlight, uh, influence the government and policy saying, hey, this is an emergency. You need to act now. This ain't you no know, uh, thing you put on the side burner. I hear you talk about this Airbnb um, pushing that agenda, but we have women who are in crisis because they have no place to take care of their family. So I want to have commentary on that. I want to know what we are doing, how we can pressure the government and the politicians, especially the women politicians there. To say, man, we need your help, man. We need to get these women into the homes. We need to protect our children. So that's why I want to have a conversation about what can we do? What are we doing? What should we be said? Who can I call and write an email to? But go ahead, any one of you. Um, well, I'll, I'll jump in first and um, uh, talk about my experience as a hotline volunteer. You know, one of the biggest I want to say emergency responses or services that I perform as a hotline volunteer is helping people to um, uh, leave violent situations. And almost, almost always the biggest barrier for them to do that is either a lack of funding or a lack of housing, usually those things going hand in hand with, with each other. Not having housing is a huge part of people staying in a violent situation. And furthermore, it's a hugely feminized um, uh, issue. You know, a lot of the women that I s would speak to, the, if they own a house jointly with their partner, it's often in the partner's name, for example. And just a sidebar on that. On Saturday at the um, March, I spoke with a real estate agent, and one of the first things she said when I sat down is put it in your name, or at least jointly. So that's my piece, a little tidbit of advice from a real estate agent to all the women out there. Put it in your name. <laughs> But sorry, that was a sidebar. So what, what we do see that um, lack of housing is a large part of A, uh, women not being able to uh, sustain wealth, B, women staying in violent situations, and, and unfortunately also keeping their children in violent situations because not having the means to move them out of, out of them, and C, not being able to, I guess, perpetuate that generational wealth and the feminization of poverty in, in a general sense. What we can do about that, um, what we need to be doing is advocating for groups like the Crisis Center, like Equality Bahamas, like you know, Women United, et cetera, to be sat at the table when we're having these discussions. Successive governments have recognized the housing issue in the Bahamas, and this government is no exception. You know, They have committed a, what, millions and millions of dollars to new housing developments, for example. You know, It's been a, a constant talking point. Um, uh, however, are there women at the table when they're putting together these programs, when they're putting, putting together? I mean, the Minister of Housing, herself is a woman, of course. Um, and so, you know, we take our small wins. Um, but, you know, when they're putting these policies together, I can't speak for Equality Bahamas. I'm not sure that Crisis Center was at those. And we are invited to a lot of tables, but there needs to be pushing of this idea that um, uh, that policy needs to be written in an intersectional way. We need to be looking at things through a gendered lens, especially things that have a disproportionate effect on, on particular genders. Um, Ms. Christie mentioned earlier that they're opening a branch in Abaco soon, mm -hmm. right? In order to respond to the Dorian babies or Dorian children and also the crisis uh, th there. Multiple, uh, multiple crises. Yes, crises. But there are shanty towns popping up all over the places, right? Again, a housing crisis issue. 
right? I've heard stories, I mean, gruesome stories of what women and children go to, go through. And with that in the background, I am panicking, right? Saying that this is, this is not something to be planned for five, 10 years from now. This is something needs to be planned for now. So building a house, a housing unit, they say, okay, you can, you can afford a low cost home isn't solving any of these women and these children issues now. And especially when we highlight and, and heralding persons for, oh, I just built a big building and naming it after my, my father. And said, but I have scores of women who need houses today. So I celebrating that big house. I mean, that big building you just big after your daddy. Because women hurt in the Santa Bahamas. And this is why I'm passionate. And I want Miss, Miss Christy comment on that. Because mm -hmm. it needs something, someone to lobby and herald now. You're quite right about that. Now, when you talk about the, as we made reference to the government housing program, which seems to be very popular in putting um, families into new homes, those schemes, those government housing programs are geared towards women who are working, employed, and who are making a salary and who can go to the bank or who have a mm -hmm. bank account. Mm -hmm. And um, they are qualified, so to speak, for a loan and they get into a government house or they get a government house. Mm -hmm. But what we're looking at are women who are not so fortunate. They mm -hmm. don't have that, um, that ability, the financial ability to go to a bank. Some of them don't have banking accounts. Um, they're working off and on. They're mm -hmm. making minimal wage. But yet they have children. They need a place to live. So what are we doing to help them? Mm -hmm. So that's the group that we need to put the spotlight on. We need to help wim these women with, and children. Um, the first thing that I notice when there's a breakdown in the relationship the partner puts out the women and children at two o'clock in the morning. Mm. Mm -hmm. Unless you have family and friends that you can um, stay with, then I mean, you're knocking from pillar to post. You're coming to the crisis center and we put you up in temporary housing. Mm. You go to social services, it's the same thing, it's temporary. Mm -hmm. It's the um, place in the middle there. Um, Salvation Army. It's all temporary. You go for a week, you go for two mm. weeks, maybe extended to a month. And then what? We have the same problem. You have the children. You see, and you talk about family and you talk about children exposed to violence and you talk about children who are not getting the proper care and attention. All of this, and this is where it's all starting. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This is, you, 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 you're planting now a seed that is going to grow and it's going to grow into what? Not a good tree, a bad tree, because there's not been any kind of nurturing, real good nurturing. Mm -hmm. And so this housing problem is indeed... Perhaps one of the biggest crises we're facing How urgent is it, Tuesday? How urgent is it? It is urgent. It is urgent. Um, I can tell you about a case that we had where a woman lived in a kitchen. I could tell you about a case we had where a uh, magistrate lived in the courthouse. I just saying. Uh, I mean, yeah, that, that was over so a decade ago. Are yes, very yes. Yes. So she lived in a kitchen, and this kitchen was a kitchen that served a house with families. And so, anytime you went to the fridge, you went to cook, you went to whatever, she and her children had a bed in the kitchen. In um, addition to that, there are some small, I guess for want of a better word, motels around where women um, and families rent a room. And these rooms um, are able to hold a small single cot bed. Yeah. You can't even move. And it's... And it's just terrible. The, the, the whole um, In fact, environment it yeah. is just terrible. The, the rooms are not, I don't think they're intended for habitation. They're intended for solicitation. Mm -hmm. well. And uh, people are being forced <laughs> to 
um, to, to make do of whatever they can find, whatever's available to them. You're quite, you're quite right about that. So I'm saying this not to inflame anyone, but to just yeah. say how urgent the problem is. So yes, we can take care of those working women out there who are making the money, who's able to get the bank loan and to get a government house and all of that, but there's still a, lo a layer there that is not receiving any kind of attention. And that's where we need to mm -hmm. focus. Yes, we need a lot more robust programming for those who are mm -hmm. the most vulnerable and, side and, of and the, the And spectrum. the type of attention, right? Mm -hmm. uh, like earlier, uh, Shantez, you, you know, you, I think you, you referenced, it's not just access to housing, it's the type of housing mm -hmm. that is, you know, that it's also important. And it's not just access to support, but it's, is the support holistic? Does it address mm -hmm. every issue? You find an un unhoused person Finding them a room for a day or a week is mm -hmm. not solving the problem. It's just a band-aid. We really then have to have a system that can I identify the source of the crises. And, and you mentioned that you have temporary housing and various NGOs have temporary housing. Mm -hmm. And you mentioned sometimes it's a week or, or a month. But who is responsible for building these? Uh, is there any government or organization or private organization say, hey, every year we put out at least two apartments that, no. that can be produced? Is, is, is such a program exist right now? No. What There's happens, multiple. sorry, what happens is that social services, mm -hmm. um, there is a program that social services work with a number of motels, mm -hmm. and <clears throat> it is through social services and their collaboration with these small motels mm -hmm. that they allow people, um, victims and their children to be housed temporarily. Mm -hmm. So social services, you'd have to go there, you'd have to go through um, their system and yeah. providing information, et cetera, et cetera, and then you get the, you're entitled to, or they give you the housing, which is for about, it starts off being a week, and then there's, um, you need permission to go further two weeks. And really after two to three weeks, you really need to find somewhere else to go. I, 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 so you see, that's, that, that is the problem. And the same thing, if you go to, um, uh, what's the place there in uh, the middle? Uh, uh, you, you can go to Salvation, Salvation. Army, for Salvation. example. Mm -hmm. yeah. For example, mm -hmm. they provide housing. Mm -hmm. Um, but the difficulty there is they don't take boys over 12. Mm -hmm. no. And the other thing is, when you go there, when you rise in the morning with your children, you have to leave the premises mm -hmm. and go wherever, but you can only come back to sleep. At night, I didn't know, yeah. know that. But yeah. you, you can only come back at night to sleep, but during the day, they don't allow you on the premises. Mm -hmm. So again, you know, if you have a sick child, you know, you're not feeling well, it's just If you need to job tough. search, because often, you know, that, right. like we said, many persons are not currently or they're either underemployed or not uh, stably employed. You know, we were talking about intersectionality and how this is compounded and, you know, the, is the manner of help they're getting comprehensive to their needs. Often there isn't one set of needs. You know, you're in a violent situation. You're often also um, mm -hmm. some, in some ways financially impaired. Maybe you don't have access to a bank account, and that's stunting so many other things that you might need to do. Um, if you have children on board, you know, there's, they, they need access to schooling, care, and supplies for and that. And how do you go to look for work? How do you mm -hmm. uh, attempt to find clothing to prepare for a job interview if you have to tow two, three, even one child behind you? Yep. But I see we have a caller here. So producers patch the caller here. Uh, it's true. But I see the government are, are mandating the persons in the shanty towns to move out now, right? These are, if for lack of better words, hundreds of houses, right? Surely we don't have the space, the temporary housing for hundreds of new people um, to say, well, there's a place for you to rest your head. Uh, this night. I, I am concerned and I would say again, this is a crisis. I want to know, is this conversation uh, of this warning, this foreboding to, hey, what are we going to be dealing with in the next month? It's going to be bad, so we need to speed up everything. But let me pass it, call it through. Go ahead, call it. Can you hear me? Um, this uh, topic is really um, uh, touching my heart because 
because this is one of my passions. I always said that if I won the lottery, I would fix this problem that we have in this country. But we don't need to win the lottery to fix it. We just need to have um, people in leadership and power willing to uh, make the bold moves. There, if you drive through the inner city, uh, inner cities of New Providence, there are many abandoned buildings. There are many buildings that I often say, why can't the government acquire them? And you, they can acquire buildings that owe major taxes instead of sit empty and, and, and drop down. They can pass laws to do this. And I guarantee you, I know a handful of private people that would partner with the government in a, a public-private partnership to build a, uh, build a multi-unit uh, building where you can house. They don't have to be fancy apartments. They just have to be adequate. And if you want to make it temporary, fine until the individual gets on her feet, or you can just have it where, yes, you do have government housing for low-income uh, families who can afford to buy but these can be for the low-income families who cannot afford to borrow money, but can afford to pay a couple hundred dollars, maybe a month for rent, and, and have that private partnership where they can help sustain it and maintain it. I have a vision for it, and it's never been, it's not rocket science, but I just don't know who I need to go to to get convince them this is what we need. It, it, it's just so very sad driving around and seeing, and I can only imagine what you guys hear on your hotline. It, I probably would never sleep at night if I did get those phone calls, but I'm just saying I, I applaud you, I encourage you, and please continue to do what you're doing because... If I can find a way, I would find a way to help these people. Anyway, thank you for listening. Thank you very much, Carla. I appreciate it. Um, and Carla asks, how can she help? Who can she go to to give her ideas and concepts of what she thinks possibly can work? Look here, 322-4999. 322-4999. That's the number to the administrative office of the crisis center. Again, the hotline number, if you find yourself in crisis, is 32809. Two two. That's three two eight zero oh, nine two two. You can also yeah, reach yeah. out to Equality Bahamas mm -hmm. on Facebook or Instagram or Twitter. Uh, you can ask them for contact or just share your concerns or advice there as well. You could also go to the Ministry of Social Services. Go to the Department of Gender and Family Affairs. Look for a list. Ask them for a list of all of the NGOs registered underneath there. Nice. Look at the list. Mm -hmm. Find your fit. Connect with them. We're going to quickly go to the other caller so they can engage the, the panel. But can I join join Equal Equality Bahamas? Like, will they welcome me as a male? Just ask him. I just yeah, want to yeah. man. Yeah, yeah, there's no restriction. I can pass by. He will not be the only male member. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> Feminism does not restrict men from participating no. in the revolution. So there'll be other men there. Because my wife will let me be around too many women. So I just want to know that there'll be <laughs> well, other people I could talk to. Well, well, can I just say, you can also <laughs> sign up as a volunteer for the Bahamas Crisis Center. Yes, you can. Um, we have male volunteers really? as well. Mm -hmm. So please. I want to say I shout see. out to Duran Thompson Sr., oh, yeah, yes. one of the original. Exactly. Yes. What type of work would I be volunteering to do? I just can't see it. Well, we have a whole list of things. You know, we have a number of, you have advocacy, you have court watch, you have um, hotline, you have... Um, uh, events. Oh, okay. We are. have all sorts of. Stuff. I can find you something to do. You have marketing. You have sitting on Facebook and sharing I do it all posts the time. and messaging. I was say, yeah, you want to join the PR team? Yeah, I, I, can, I, can, I can share things. I can share things. But let's go to the next caller. Go ahead, caller. <laughs> Thank you for holding. Yes. Good morning. Um, a pleasant good morning to all of you. First of all, it's an awesome show this morning, and um, it, it also touches my heart what I'm listening to. Um, I want to say. I concur with the previous caller because I was thinking along the same lines, and I also wanted I want to say thanks to Howard for wanting to volunteer because I was also thinking why are we leaving the men out because obviously excuse me ma'am let's just take a pause this is Mr C A Newry and I just want you to know sorry like Howard. sorry there's no problem I'm yeah, getting used to it nowadays okay. but go ahead ma'am go ahead yes what I what I wanted to say is we are family so. Whether it's a woman with just the children, there was a man involved if he's no longer there. So I'm saying we need to also include them. 
but do it in a nice way, okay? Because many of these children, I am sure the fathers still want to participate in their lives, mm -hmm. and if we allow them to, they can also contribute to the housing as well as the education, the food and clothing of all of these children. And so my heart, re uh, my heart, um, I, I, I have a soft spot in my heart for women with children, but I want to include the fathers, so let's consider them as well. Find a way to reach out to the fathers or ask the ladies how best can can the organization reach out to the fathers to assist. That's my take. Thank you. Thank you very Thank you very, very much, ma'am. You know, um, and one of the reasons why I wanted to do the show is because the vast majority of Bahamians see the crises. They see people in crises and they want to help. They, they just as individuals don't necessarily have the capacity to respond to these massive situations. And so organizations like the Crisis Center provide you with an opportunity to channel your concerns, your thoughts, your resources through a system where they'll have a, you know, where you know that your efforts will and resources will be put to good uh, work. I'm just excited that I can volunteer at the crisis center. I just didn't know that, and I appreciate you letting me know that, Ms. Christie. But let's patch this through to the next caller there so you continue the conversation. Go ahead, caller. Good morning, C.A. Good morning, uh, Aaron. Good morning, your guest in studio. Very impactful conversation this morning. I also concur with the previous two callers on their vision on trying to bring this thing into being. Um, what comes across the mind straight away is, um, firstly, I, I, I understand that this is the International Day of the Four for Women. Mm -hmm. um, I'm also uh, want to acknowledge, you know, that although this is that day, uh, we're talking about, for this particular pref uh, topic that we're talking about now, has there been any consensus on how many men actually is also in this in this sort of crisis who also have responsibility for their children. Um, you know, we, we seem to highlight, and not saying I'm taking away anything from the women, but we seem to highlight the women, but we are neglecting also recognizing the men who also standing up for their children, who are also fighting in the courts for their children, but yet are not being given their due respect and due rights in, in this, in this uh, dispensation. Um, I believe, um, as one of the previous callers said, you know, with all these derelict buildings and everything, perhaps we need now to move into what is called community service. Community service in terms of, you know, all of these persons, all these fathers who are presently without work, not because they want to be out of work, but because of the other parameters that, that prevents them. And also to the women who may not be working but want to work and can't. Perhaps an initiative like this to find a derelict building to have the PPP come about and engage them into community projects, whereas the building that they're tackling is part of their community, whereas they're also collecting a stipend to help take care of the family. I think that is also something that we should also consider in this, in this dispensation. The government is not, is not the end-all, be-all for these things. And we as Bahamians, we have to now take the initiative that we must take care of our own. We must take care of ourselves. Mm -hmm. We must participate to bring these things into being. And so I just said all of that just to get the input, to hear the, the various um, um, comments that your guests may have in studio so I could be edified by, you know, or have a clearer vision of what's really going on in our country today. And in closing, the, do you know where the wealth of a society is when, when, when we are able to take care of the less fortunate among us as well as our elderly? And they heavily are also being neglected in this country. Thanks for taking my call. Thank you much. Okay. As we were saying a moment ago, this question of housing is indeed massive. It's, it cannot be led by the government alone. It cannot be led by the crisis center. It cannot be led by one entity. This has to be a collaborative effort on behalf of all Bahamians. It's a big problem. It requires more than the lot, the housing. Um, it requires proper organization. What is it going to be? Who's going to run it? What style of housing it, it's going to be? It requires a lot of input, more than I can even tell you. Um, but what I would suggest and recommend 
that this is an issue that we as Bahamians need to rise up, form some kind of committee, put our working heads together and go for it. We need to write a plan. We need to have plans drawn. You need to understand what it is you're getting into. Who do you want to help, et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. It's just massive. I mean, it, it's an absolute... And even, even if there weren't a crisis, right? Even if there weren't a crisis, you would still want bodies and mechanisms who are providing oversight, giving people opportunities to contribute. This is a community. If you want to move into this community, before you move in, you could come to our monthly meeting. You could hear the, the sort of culture that we're hoping to, to entrench in this community before you move in. You may decide it's not a the right fit for you, uh, and then the tensions that need to be addressed, like with this housing issue. Look, we've got the uh, hotel and tourism industry that is competing for, for, for bad space. Um, then we have Airbnb, and you can see Airbnb and the hotels, uh, there's a tension between them over who, who should be able to make money providing beds for people. Notice nobody has said, I would like to make money providing beds for poor people. Uh, or I would just like to provide beds for poor people, right? There's that tension there. And who is speaking out? Who is looking out, right? There's the speaking part. Who's doing the research, All right? you know, on all, all of these elements and who's paying for it? Okay, we have another caller here who wants to engage. Producer, patch that caller through. Go ahead, caller. Can you hear me? Yeah, I'm glad they dated this here in the waste again. We need justice, law, and order in this country. Yes, Brimley. I want to make, make a contribution, but first I want to say something. It's good for men to pay attention to their children because, you know, I'm physically blind. My second daughter, when she finished uh, high school, I wanted her to go away to college, but she didn't want to go because... You know, I understood because I was blind and I was unable to do certain things, but I couldn't get in college. So after I see I had that problem with her, I said, nah, you put a roof over your head. Mm -hmm. I was living with my mother at that time, you see, mm -hmm. and my daddy. Mm -hmm. So she, she did just like I've told her. And when she got married, her husband had nothing on her. Mm -hmm. Okay? And today she has a good job. Uh, but what I want to say, this, this program is very much touching. What I want to say to Miss... Uh, Christy. Miss Christy. Miss Christy, are you? This is Brayman Darlene Ferguson here. Okay. Good. Hello? Hello, yes. I'm, I'm good, thank you. What I want to say to you, right? Now, the problem isn't as big as you saying it is, okay? Everybody knows you, especially in the Anglican communities, Okay. The thing is, plenty of contractors right there in Christchurch Cathedral where you are. Uh, Bremen, Bremen, hello? Bremen, Bremen, this Wait, is, this is I getting, to her, right? I know, but Bremen, this is getting very personal here, and uh, I just want to make sure, let's keep it on subject, because I's a good Anglican, and, and you can cause me get in trouble and can't go back to church, Bremen. Thank Bremen. you for that. Okay, My I want to know... Does the crisis have open house? Uh, when I say open house, uh, now that I know that there are jobs for me to volunteer, I, I want to know if I can come in and sit down and then you just explain everything that is there. And I say, okay, I won't do that. I won't do that right now. We, we have volunteers meetings on a monthly basis. We're, we're engaged in community activities. Um, presently, we're um, working on a project with U, UB um, there's a, ma a men's program coming up on next week, Tuesday, where they're talking and addressing problems with men and boys, and it's going to be led by some of the very prominent men in our community. We're in, presently engaged in a program with um, BTVI, and again, it's sensitizing, making young people aware of what the problems are, where they can go for help, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so we, we're doing, we're busy all the time. Mm -hmm. Just pop in and just give them a call and find out what, you, could, what you can join right away. Yes. I, I see we have another caller here. Producer, patch that caller through. Producer, oh, Aaron, I got you. I got Thank you. Thank very much, Aaron, Madam Producer. Go ahead, caller. Morning to everyone. Morning, morning. morning. Yes. Um, powerful show this morning. 
Um, what I want to say this morning as relates to the housing situation, mm-hmm. in respect to a, one of the, the call, one of your lady callers, mm-hmm. who spoke about her passion and uh, who she could speak to, and mm-hmm. then y'all gave her your advice. But I think, uh, like your guest, one of your guests is saying, it has to be a collaborative effort, and I think this is that the housing situation has to be a national come under that national development plan. Then the so-called sovereign wealth fund has been repealed. Now, this country is supposed to be a democratic country. There are many men who, like your one of your male callers, spoke about the fathers who wish to have a place and wanted to have a place. That's how the children got here, a place in their children's lives, and they lost their children. He spoke about the fathers who have having problems in, in the court, but people like myself and others, who the court's been finished with us. 100% was just taken away, custody and control. They don't care what how the father feels, and, you know, if you try to stand up for your fundamental rights and freedom as a behemoth black male in this country, then you're victimized, whatever little business you got, it, it's taken away. If you're violated in some strange and ungodly way, but, you know, through Yahweh Elohim, I post this. And I hope other young men and men all over the world will continue to post this today. Thank you very much for that, Amos. Um, and I want to ask Miss Christie. Uh, I don't know, Aaron was mentioned, at least told me to write it down, and, I, and she might have forgotten. Um, what is the most pressing issues facing women women today or that you see come through the, the crisis center? They say, okay, these are things that we're addressing. These are things that we tend to deal with on an often or daily basis. Mm-hmm. Well, we deal with a variety of work um, in the crisis center daily. I can't tell you um, that I can leave my home on any given day and say that, oh, it's going to be an easy day. It's always full of surprises. And when I say surprises, I don't mean good surprises. It's mean, it means that there are people coming forward with um, their problems and crises and all of that. So every day we are seeing battered women. Um, that never seems to cease. And as much as we talk and make people aware of um, domestic violence, for example, it continues at an alarming rate. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, the, the women are still coming. They're still um, disfigured with black eyes, um, marks around the necks mm-hmm. and all of that. So. I think the domestic violence is what we see on a daily basis. It keeps growing and growing. Mm -hmm. Um, We also have, um, in addition to our daily dose of crises, we run a program for children exposed to violence. And one of the things that, as adults, we think because the children are not are equal, that if we fight row and carry on badly in the presence of our children, oh, they don't know, they don't understand, et cetera, et cetera. But I just want you to know that when children are exposed to that kind of behavior, it they are affected. You will see it in their schoolwork, their behavior, and all of that. Mm-hmm. So that's a program that we run, and we have children coming to our clinics three times a week. There's another program that we see. As a result of these children who are exposed to violence, they're not doing well in school. So what we have done is we've put on a program um, where we have two retired teachers who are helping them with their school lessons, helping them to read, helping them to write. Um, So it's a variety of things that we see, cases that we see on a daily basis in in the Bahamas Crisis Center. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, if, you know, if I could say, 
uh, I think we we sort of highlighted housing as one of the one of the big right. issues. Uh, and, and how it affects everyone. But domestic violence is tied to that, right? Because people people remain in an unsafe environment because there is no alternative. Or someone is unable is unable to to evacuate, right? When they see the warning signs because the system is not prepared to deal with crises 24-7. Like you say, it's 2 a.m. in the morning, but the the, the the office is closed. Nobody's there to pick up the phone. Uh, I, I mean, I've been to stations, the officers sleep and you can't even get inside the station, right? And so these are the types of things uh, that are all sort of related to this idea that you can't move immediately when you see the warning signs, right? Because there's a housing, there's a housing crisis. Um, I think child care, options for safe care for children, right? While the parents go to school, church, while, to, right, right, to work. While you're not in my presence, right? And so what we're finding now is even from they leave school to home is a space in which parents are now extremely concerned about the safety of their children. There's, there's gang violence, there's sexual predation, right? And there's economic, there's economic violence where children are convinced to work, right? Because they're desperate for money, but they're not getting paid fairly or they shouldn't be working at all. Um, and I think a number of these things. I think uh, another issue that we're facing now is the gap, the, techni the technological skills gap between parents and children and a parent's inability to monitor, to provide oversight, to prepare their children for uh, the internet technology, social media, and protecting themselves and their privacy on the internet. And I think that's another big, big issue that we see policymakers pointing to in, and, and the Commissioner of Police pointing to in the commentary. Uh, I see I have another call here, but what I want to talk also, Ms. Uh, Ms. Christie, is partnership uh, with the Crisis Center. I know that the police unit or the police force has created a, what that kind of unit they for the domestic, right, the domestic, new domestic violence unit. and sexual crimes unit. And I want to know how did how is the crisis center involved in that? If they are involved in that, and um, and various organizations and um, partnership where where yeah. things go awry. But let me put the caller through. Then I have you respond to that right mm -hmm. now. Go ahead, caller. Can you hear me? Hey, good day, um, uh, CA and your guests and Ellen. Um, Aaron, sorry. Mm -hmm, no problem. Um, I have a couple questions, um, and you can answer them after. I, I hang up, but and so I do um, appreciate Women's um, International Day of Women. I think or International Women's Day, mm -hmm. and I understand the emphasis on it. But I do believe, as a man, we have a crisis with men. Um, I, one of my questions is: Do you see a lot of men coming in um, with issues um, to your organization? And yeah, as a percentage of men versus women coming in, and not specific to anything, could you? Um, once we once I hang up, could you identify what that number is for men? I say we have a crisis of men because when you look at who's being killed in this country, we're losing hundreds of men each year. Now that could be through violence, that could be through, and they're killing themselves there. So yes, that, uh, we do have a problem with men raping women. I understand that too. I don't know what the percentage is. I think whatever it is is too high. I recognize that. Um, but we, I also believe that we have, we have an issue that we're ignoring, which is this man-on-man uh, -man violence, uh, outside of the men-on-women's violence. Um, additionally, there is this, um, I would like to know what percentage of men, uh, of women come and complain that their husbands raped them. I would like to actually get a percentage from you. You should have some statistics, because I believe that we don't have a serious issue with that that warrants this keep pressing and keep bringing this up every every time they as an opportunity we keep bringing that up i don't believe we have that i have we think we have much serious issues women who have problem with men, husbands raping them they could leave them i can't see that as an issue um and so i would like to know that that uh have those percentages if you don't have them then i don't believe that we're serious i don't i don't trust no nope. i don't trust those who are bringing and, that forward um, thank allow, you allow miss christie to respond i see you try to crochet the last part it wasn't need but go ahead miss christie um hmm, you said a mouthful there but let's talk about obviously i see that you are recognizing that men do rape their wives and what you're suggesting is <clears throat> that if it happens then um they should just leave well 
um, that's, that's, that's real, and that happens in many instances, that where a woman is abused in that fashion, um, it goes on. Um, some women live in these relationships for long periods of time, 10 years, 20 years, and it takes many years before they certainly reach the boiling point and say that they cannot take it anymore. Um, I don't have a percentage as to how many men rape their women. All I can tell you is that I know that it happens. I see it in the work that we do. Um, I hear these complaints directly from, um, from women that we see in the clinic. And of course, you would recall that there was a case before the Supreme Court, a divorce case, before the Supreme Court um, a couple months ago, and the court ruled that there was that there is no such offense as marital rape. Now they went, to, but the court still granted the divorce on the basis of cruelty. So yes, we all admit and we all know that there is no offense in Bahamian law called marital rape. That there is, no matter how you put it, spousal rape or whatever, it does not exist. And that is a, the thrust of the um, agitation and awareness that um, groups are going through trying to um, say to the public that spousal rape is real and it happens. And now, Commentary about the police unit? Now, the police unit is, thank you, uh, the police unit is the new created domestic violence unit. And I'm happy to report that we are working very closely with them. We are working in collaboration with the police because we understand that victims of sexual crimes should be treated um, with respect and dignity, and they should not be um, re-victimized um, just because they make a report to the police. So this new unit is in the, it's presently located in the barracks at um, the police headquarters, and it is fully staffed. They have a mandate, they have policies, they have guidelines, and they are hoping to move in the very near future, within um, a short time, to a new building, which is located somewhere in the Western District, and um, which is presently being renovated for them. And the Bahamas Crisis Center will have an office in that nice. building. Mm -hmm. So when, you, when a victim goes to make a complaint to the police, they will refer that victim to the Bahamas Crisis Center. And we will arrange their counseling um, for them and their children if needs be. So it's a great move on behalf of the police. Absolutely. Is the uh, building on a bus route? Yes, it is on this a bus is awesome. route. This is awesome. So I just want to respond to uh, the caller. Uh, his concern is that we are not paying enough attention to the status of men and the needs of men. I want you to know that there is a Mr. David Williams, who's a part of the International Men's Day body in the Bahamas. I've had him on my show a number of times, multiple times, many times since I started on the clock. And I want to say to you that he and his team are available. If you think that we need to prioritize, uh, uh, focus on the status of men, please, you reach out to him. And if you need support from existing organizations that are already doing work, you could reach out to them and ask them, how can they support you in building a platform to focus on the needs of men? David Williams has been doing this work. And his work is not just focused on helping men live healthier lives for themselves, but also for the purpose of eradicating violence against women and girls. It also aims to eradicate gang violence, right? And so all of the things that you are looking for, they're already taking place in an organization that is specifically designed to focus on the needs of men for the benefit of both men and women. And for those texters who have said they don't really, they haven't heard how any of these things benefit men, 
Well, first of all, I'm going to say to you, you shouldn't have come to this conversation with a desire to hear what primarily benefits men. It's a conversation about the status of women. What is fortunate, I think, is that in all of the things that we've talked about today, all of these things will also benefit men, right? Temporary housing and emergency housing facilities for women who have suffered at the hand of physical or sexual abuse and need emergency shelter, when your spouse or significant other runs hard and tell you, man, you got to get out of my house before I call the police, you don't have to panic because you know there is an emergency or temporary housing option available for you until the morning, until you could connect with your family, until you could go back to the house and calm her heads prevail, and you could collect some things and make another option. All of these things benefit men. Safe women, safe children. When you leave your women, your children with these women, you don't want them to be safe. You don't want your progeny, your children to be safe. All of these things that we've talked about today directly and indirectly benefit men as well. And the crisis center has said plainly, they offer programming for men. Intimate partner violence also includes violence against men. Gender-based violence also includes violence against men. I see we have another caller here. Caller, can you hear me? Go ahead, Cole. I can hear you in the background. Thank you. Yes, I have a question. You kind of muffled me. Yes, but I hear better, better now. Better. Yeah, okay. I'm on the air? Yes, yes, sir. Okay, listen. If you're going to pass the law, a marital rape, my thing is we, we have to make sure that we have procedures in place. For instance, if your daughter or your son is accused of something and they're married, we have to make sure that you have DNA or any type of procedure, medical, um, um, scientific, um, specimens that need to be drawn from them at the time of the charge. You want to make sure that if you're enacting these laws, you're going to have things in place, procedures in place, so to, to, to protect both sides. Uh, caller, if you caller, just pass the law... Caller, uh -huh. caller, quick question. Do they have procedures uh, for the regular rape crimes? Yeah, yeah. Those so so you, wouldn't, you wouldn't assume, yes, you wouldn't yes, assume yes, that... Hold on now. I'm just asking... Hold on, one minute for me, Carlo. I just yeah, want to. I just want to know. Yes, I just want to know. So you don't assume that they would have the same thing for marital rape, because no. So listen to me carefully. There's certain. Okay, that's you know this is a serious matter, right? I'm saying the quicker if there's a procedure that they have for the regular rape, right? If that can be combined with what they deem it fine, that's no problem. But I'm saying you have to really make sure. You might have to add DNA and stuff like that. Make sure because. Your wife could tell you, you, she, you rate her, and come to find out she has a lover, right? And then if there's no testing in place, then you may go down, right? And that, yeah. that, that, that. Yeah, um, I, I hear you, caller. And like I said before, um, one would assume the same uh, technique that they go through with regular rape and regular crime would be applied to martyr rape. Uh, what you are doing is speculating and saying that for some sinister reason they won't do it for marriage for in, within the marriage, and that do, doesn't make any sense. But let's go to the next caller there. Yeah. Go ahead, caller. Yeah. Can you hear me, ma'am? Come, sir. Can you hear me? Hello. You're on live. Going once. Can you hear me now? Yeah, I can hear you now. Go ahead. Hello. Good morning. Hi. 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 Good morning. Yeah, I just want to correct something. The gentleman just made a statement. I did not, I'm not saying that, that what you just mentioned about. You didn't give me a time, chance to complete my thought. Okay? I'm just saying to you, if you need to add any more stuff to that, including the regular testing that they're doing now to strengthen this situation to make sure that we don't have innocent people going to jail. You see what I'm saying? Yes, sir. You have to give me an opportunity to explain. Okay, then, sir. I that's all I'm it. saying, you know. Let me have the panelists uh, okay. respond. Okay. So yeah, that's all I'm saying. So listen. So you have to be pushing for that also. Okay. Yeah. So okay. let me just make a couple points here. As we have said a moment ago, the offense of marital rape does not exist in Bahamian law as yet. Okay? There is talk about it coming on stream. It does not exist. But if and when a, an offense of marital rape or spousal rape or whatever you tend to call it, is written into the law. It has, um, like all other offenses, 
in order to, if someone is charged, you have to prove it, not just prove it, you have, you have to prove it beyond a reasonable doubt. So all of the things that you are mentioning um, or that you have concerns about, all of these things will, will come during the course of a police investigation. So it, it isn't any kind of flippant um, um, offense. Uh, yeah, so. Absolutely. Uh, thank you very much, uh, caller. Mrs. Christie, we are all out of time. Uh, there's a thousand things I want to say. The best show is when I don't have to say anything because all of it is being said. I do want to say this, this is still not a safe place for women until all women and the most vulnerable of us are not just safe but guaranteed safety. The fight continues, but most importantly, women, it is time for us to step up and put our resources together to support ourselves and those that are most important to us. Fortunately, that's women, children, and the men's them too. Don't forget, women love the men, and the work to support and protect women always includes men and is always to the benefit of men. And I want to say to the to that caller, there's a man.